God, where are you? You don't feel me anymore. Why, O oh Lord, do you make us wander from your ways and harden our hearts so we do not revere you? Rebellion against God in our actions will mean that we may suffer in this life and if we don't repent, we will suffer in eternity. I am not going to punish you. I will carry your punishment. God knows your pain. And if you are distressed, he is also feeling the same stress. of 63 and 64 and with Isaiah we are going to learn how he thanked God for what the work he did on the cross if you look with me and we'll start in verse 7 I this is Isaiah is continuing his prayer I will tell of the kindness of the Lord the deeds for which he is to be praised according to all the Lord has done for us. Yes, many good things he has done for the house of Israel according to his compassion and many kindness. At the very beginning he, of his prayer, he stands before God and he says, You, O God, have been very kind to me. And that is important for you and me to learn. Before we start bombarding God in prayer with our requests, to say, God, we thank you for the things you have done. If you look at the book of prayer, the Igbeya, it always starts with the prayer of thanksgiving. Satan is so quick to let us forget how God has been good to us. If we look on the track record, you will notice that God has always been faithful, like Isaiah says. Verse 8 he said, surely they are my people, sons who will not be false to me. And so he became their savior. Kalam Gamil, so beautiful that God has become our savior. Let us reserve this title only to God. So don't say that your husband is your savior. And don't say that your wife is your savior. And don't say that a friend is your savior. This is a special title that's given for only one savior. And that is Christ our God. Verse 9. In all their distress, he too was distressed. Stop right there and remember that. That you, God knows your pain. And if you are distressed, he is also feeling the same stress. It is not like people say, God, where are you? You don't feel me anymore. No, we learn from here that in all our distress, he too is distressed. The angel of his presence saved them. And yes, many times I stand and I talk about angels, angels, angels. Our church loves angels. And our church adores the angels and it gives them names and ranks and feasts and fasts. The story of Daniel was so full of Archangel Michael and Archangel Gabriel. This is just to name it a few of the many archangels that look after us. You and me also, we all have our own guardian angel. Do you know that you have your own assigned angel that reports what you do and what you say to God and the other way around? In his love and mercy, he redeemed them. That's you and me on his work on the cross. He lifted them up and carried them all the days of old. And if you look to your life, you will see that God has lifted you, lifted you up. Every time that you went down, God carried us and brought us till today. You know the story of the man who was walking on the sand and Jesus' feet was with him. But there were times when there was only, only one footprint 
And he said, God, you left me then. He said, no, that was the time when I carried you. That was the time when I lifted you up. See, the days of old. Remember the days of old. When you start to doubt that God cares and God loves, when you start to doubt that God is not strong to deliver you from your problem today, I tell you, you have forgotten the past. Look on the past and you will see the track record of God. Verse 10. Despite all this love and all this kindness, they rebelled and grieved the Holy Spirit. Yes, we rebel a lot despite God's goodness to us. And if you say you haven't rebelled, I tell you, you're lying. You're fooling yourself. We all have rebelled and fallen short. And grieved the Holy Spirit. And here is a clear indication that we can grieve the Holy Spirit by our misdeeds. Grieve. The Holy Spirit is one of the titles or one of the, the, the persons of God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So when you grieve the Holy Spirit, you have grieved the heart of God. And when that happens, it, the Bible tells us that sometimes so he turns and became their enemy. And he himself fought against them. Yes, no one will say that rebellion goes unnoticed. Rebellion against God will have consequences. Rebellion against God in our actions will mean that we may suffer. In this life, and if we don't repent, we will suffer in eternity. Verse 11. After the people fell and rebelled, look what happened. Then his people recalled the days of old. Mohim Awi, to recall the old days. Believe me, it is important to remember how God has been faithful to you in the past years I'm not saying past week look back when you were 20 and 30 and 40 and 50 and etc the people recalled and remembered the days of old look so the days of Moses and his people and they remember that God was able to deliver them from the Pharaohs through the Red Sea where he who brought them through the sea with the shepherd of his flock. So, where is he who set his Holy Spirit among them? Who sent his glorious arm of power to be at Moses' right hand? Who divided the waters before them to gain for himself everlasting renown? We all remember times in our life when we said that there is a deep sea. We are going to sink. We will not survive it. We cannot breathe. The water is rising, 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 and one day it will cover us. But God with a mighty hand comes and parts the sea. And you start to live again. And you start to breathe. Verse 13. Who led them through the depths that when they walked into the depths of the Red Sea, like a horse in an open country, running everywhere, they did not stumble, like cattle that go down to the plain, plain meaning the plain of the, of the grass where they can feed and run. They were given rest by the Spirit of the Lord. Muhammad al-Ayadi, by the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of God gives rest. If you feel restless, find the Spirit of God inside of you. You know when you feel restless about something at work, something in your life, something in a relationship, you're restless. You're not enjoying every day. You cannot, things look, you're restless. Can't sleep, can't eat, can't drink, can't see. Remember the Bible where it says that the Spirit of God gives rest. Really, people who have no God in their life, they are restless. The whole world is going around and around, trying to find rest for their life. 
And we know that there is no rest except in Christ. This is how you guided your people. You feel you are not guided. You feel that you are lost. You feel that you cannot make the right decisions. You don't know what to do. I tell you, look for God in your life. He will be a good guide. A good guide. Someone to guide you step by step. At times we stand before God and we say, God, why did you let this pain happen in my life? Why did you let a, a young man be born only to suffer illness? Why did you let this couple go through difficulty? Why did you let a young boy's mother die? Why do you let a father or a family die in a car act? Why all these tragedies around us? Sometimes we stand and talk to God. Why is there some difficulties in our life? At times we, tell, we feel like we want to tell God, are you really seeing us? And that's what Isaiah is saying. Oh God, look down from heaven and, a, and see. From your throne that is holy and glorious. Look down. Look down. Do you think if God looks down today, what would he say of his church? And what would he think about the world outside us? I can assure you about the world he is going to be unhappy. I have a picture in my, my computer of the face of Christ in tears looking at the world and where we are today. The one thing that brings joy to his heart is his people, you and I, is his church, you and I, when we offer true repentance. Where are your zeal and your might? Your tender compassions are withheld from us. Sometimes God holds his compassion simply because we are walking away from him. Verse 16, Shufu Gamel, but you are our a father. You have no father, I tell you, you have a father in heaven, the heavenly father. So when Jesus taught us how to pray, when he said, Our Father, He art in heaven, it wasn't new. It was already said seven, eight hundred years ago when Isaiah said, But you, here's the first title, you are our father. Though Abraham does not know us or Israel acknowledge us, you, O Lord, are our father. And he gives him other titles. Our what? Redeemer from old is your name. A father cares about his people and his children. And Jesus, our Lord, cares about you and me. Verse 17 the consequences of sin are apparent here. Isaiah is asking another question. Why, O Lord, do you make us wander from your ways and harden our hearts so we do not revere you? Believe me, it is not him. It is so easy to say that, God, you did this. Say it, why did you kill? Satan made me do it. Why did you steal? Satan made me do it. And so I worry so much that we give so much blame and responsibility to God when really it is you and I who have a hard heart. You and I who are in rebellion. You and I who choose the darkness on top of the light. Why, O oh Lord, do you make us wander from your ways? Because God respects freedom. He wants us to choose him willingly, willingly to choose him. Like he chose us, he wants us to choose him. God can make the whole world Christian, but he wouldn't. He wouldn't. He wants people out of their own free will to love him and to choose him. Isaiah goes on to say, return for the sake of your servants. Return for the sake of your servants. Yani shafa'a. As many people these days are attacking the concept of intercession. 
هو شوف ايزايا هنا بيقول ريتيرن فور ذا سيك اوف هو يور سيرفنتس ذا بيبول هو براي فور يو اول ذا تايم فور ذير سيك يبقى اذا ذا كونسبت اوف انترسيشن از ريل فور جاد ويل دو سمثينج فور ذا سيك اوف سم ون هو هيز دايد فور هيم ا مارتر فروم ذا تشيرش سانت موريس سانت فيرينا سانت ميري اتسترا The tribes that are your inheritance. Verse 18. For a little while your people possessed your holy land. So he's talking about the time when the people lived in the land of Canaan and had the holy temple with them. But now our enemies have trampled down your sanctuary. And we know that God allowed it because his people lived in sin. Again, I will say here that every action has a consequence. Every action has a consequence. We, you may repent and God will forgive you. But there is things that have been done. It cannot be undone. The laws of nature cannot be undone. We are yours from old. Hmm? From old we are gods. But you have not ruled over them. They have not been called by your name. And he is here referring to the people who always disobey God going on into chapter 64 quickly where Isaiah starts with a question and says oh that you would rend the heavens and come down يعني بالعربي ليتك ايه تشق السماوات وايه وتنزل rend the heaven يعني open the heavens and come down that's Isaiah talking 700 years ago did God listen to this prayer What do you think? Did he or did he not? He did. He did. He did. Christmas we celebrate. Isaiah here is standing before God and praying, O oh God, that you would rend the heavens and come down. Hasal. It happened. When the fullness of time, when the young girl Mary became what? Pregnant with the Spirit of God. So God came down. He said, Isaiah, is that your prayer? Yes, I will open the heavens and I will come down. Isaiah says that the mountains would tremble before you and it happens. As when fire sets twigs ablaze and causes the water to boil. You know, when we have God's spirit inside of us, really, 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 we will be like this. We will be on fire. Ablaze, ablaze, يعني مولع, on fire, and as if the water is boiling. You like understand that life inside of him is full of spirit. Come down and make your name known to your enemies. And we still pray this prayer today. Whenever there's persecution on the church, whenever there's people trying to bomb and kill Christians worshiping the church, we pray for our enemies. Say exactly as he is saying here, come down to make your name known to your enemies and cause the nations to quake before you. Verse 3, for when you did awesome things that we did not expect, you came down and the mountains trembled before you. Did this happen? Did God come down and the mountains trembled? When? When did that happen? When he was on the cross, Good Friday, Good Friday, God was on the cross and the mountains trembled and the, the earthquakes went through whole, the whole land and the tombs were open and the dead were raised. So all this happened. Since ancient times, no one has heard and no ear has perceived and no eye has seen any God beside you who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. And that's what God did. He came down in the fullness of time as a young child, innocent, when his mother, St. Mary, conceived of the Holy Spirit, and he grew, he did good, and then he was crucified and carried our burdens on his shoulder so that you and I can be redeemed. No other God has done this. Our God says, no, 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 you don't die. I will die for you. 
Whereas other gods, they say, no, you die for us. Put something around you and you die. You people die for their God, but our God died for us. When we look at this, we say, no ear has perceived and no God beside you who has done these things, who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. To learn to wait on God. Wait. His timing is a little different. Actually, it is always different. His timing is very strange. Never according to our human time. Verse 5. You come to help, to the help of those who gladly do right, who remember your ways. See? See, my beloved? God will come to help. Help who? People who do right. So ask yourself, I, do you want God to help you? Habibi, do right. Live in righteousness. You want God to help you? Remember God's ways. The problem is that we are so busy. So busy, there is no time for us to even consider God in our life. But the verse is very clear. You come to help those who gladly do, not do wrong. Hmm? Don't do wrong. If, you, if there's something wrong, don't do it. Who remember your ways. But when we continued to sin against the people, you were angry. And Isaiah asked a very important question. How hmm, can we be saved? This is the million dollar question. The people are asking that question. They asked the, the apostles in the book of Acts, how can we be saved? Cornelius said, how can we be saved? We don't know. Should we go and bomb ourselves? Maybe that's how we're, we're saved. Shall we find some other people? That's how we're saved. How can we be saved? And we know that the church is very clear. There is only one way to salvation. It is through who? Jesus Christ. You miss out on that, you miss out on it all. All of us have become like one un unclean and all our righteous acts are filthy rags. Many people use this verse to say that there is no need for us to be righteous and to do good because all our goods in the eyes of God are considered like filthy rags. Yeah, it is if you're doing it on your own. If you're doing it without him in the picture. But if you have the love of Christ in you, the modesty and the humbleness, and you still do good, this brings delight to the heart of God. But if you say, no, I'm going to buy my salvation with my money. Habibi, this is filthy. It will not work. I'm going to do good to counteract the bad that I have done in life. So every one good thing will counteract every what? One bad thing and they nullify each other. That's not how it works. We all shrivel up like a leaf and like the wind, our sins sweep us away. See the description that Isaiah says? When we live in sin and people live in sin, we are swept away. May Lord... Take care of us and our children and our families and our church not to be swept away. Swept, yani kinis bil maknas, swept away. Verse 7, no one calls on your name. That's Isaiah's time. He is complaining that no one was calling on his name. What about today? <laughs> what about today? Who calls on God's name? Very few people. Very few people, very few churches. They took, a, they took a, a, a measurement and a number and a rate of how many local Canadians go to church. How many real Christian Canadians go to church? Do you know what is the figure? How many go to church regularly on Sundays? Two percent. The number that was said was 
No one calls on your name or strives to lay hold of you. And that is why you have what? Hidden your face from us and made us waste away. Why? Why? Not because you are a bad God. It is because of what? Our sins. And despite kulli kalamda, look, Isaiah stands and I can see him lifting up his hands in prayer. Something we need to teach our children. When you pray, do what? Lift up your hand in prayer. Lift up your hand. They, they taught me this. Lift up your hand so that you receive from God. Yet, O oh Lord, see he goes on to say, you are, this is the third time we read this, right? You are our what? Our Father. Shuf kalam. We are the clay. You are the potter. And the, 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 the clay doesn't ask the potter, what are you doing? The potter does what he wants. He is the potter. Many times we say, what are you doing, God? I don't want to this. I don't want that in my life. But it is important really to put things where they really are. We are not the God. He is the God. We are not the creator. We are the creation. We are the clay. You are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Really, yani you want to be beautiful, you want to do something great, let God work in your life. Because it will be the best potter. He is artist. He can make things look beautiful. He can make things great out of your life. The problem is that I want to do it my way, not his way. And when that happens, God respects our freedom. He respects our free will. And you choose. He will never force himself on you. Verse 9, prayer, do not be angry beyond measure, O Lord, and do not remember our sins, what? Forever. O, look upon us, we pray, for we are all your people. Beautiful. Look at these two verses, verse 8 and 9, beautiful prayer. When you say, our Father, you are the clay, you are the potter, we are the clay. We are the work of your hands. And that's why Abuna always prays and says, Remember, O Lord, the work of your hands. This tree, this fruit that you have planted. And do not be angry with us beyond measure. So, believe me, we are angry sometimes with God. He is supposed to be angry with us for we live the wrong way. But we stand and say, I am angry at you. You know what? I am not going to do this or do that. Refuse. I'm not going. You know what? I'm going to go to the bar tonight. I'm going to do this tonight. I don't care. You have been a bad God. And I've heard that from many people. Isaiah says, do not be angry beyond measure. So far, God has withheld his anger from us. But there will come a day, the Bible calls it the day of wrath. The day of wrath. This is the judgment day. Where he will pour out all his anger on the sinners who refuse to repent. Verse 10, your sacred cities have become, so the re re sin does this. Your sacred cities have become a desert sin this does this in one's life you allow sin to live your beautiful green land will become a desert and if you you don't need to understand what i say just it is true even zion is a desert and jerusalem is a desolation jerusalem the one city that god had loved has become a desolation because of sin O oh, our, ho our holy and glorious temple, where our fathers praised you, has been burned with fire, and all that we treasured lies in ruins. Why? Because of sin, because of wrongdoing. And Isaiah ends this beautiful prayer in these two, three chapters by this question. After all of this, O oh Lord, will you hold yourself back? Are you going to be silent? 
are you going to punish us beyond measure? And as we discussed back there, God's answer was say, no, I will not be silent. I am going to talk. I am not going to punish you. I will carry your punishment. And he came down and he carried all our punishment on the cross. And that was his answer for you and for me. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Thank you, Isaiah. And thank you, Heavenly Father, for teaching us this beautiful prayer. You reminded us, O Lord, that there is no God like you. No eye has seen and no ear has heard. Remember us, remember your church, your people who want to praise and glorify your name. We sin, we fall down, but you, O Lord, our compassionate Father, do not deal with us according to our sins, but according to your great mercy. With the intercessions of Saint Mary, Saint Maurice, and Saint Verena, all the choir of your saints, I pray this prayer. Amen.